So children have a wide range imagination, right? And our job is to reassure them that it was just a nightmare and we are here for their protection, right? But imagine three little boys living a nightmare they will never wake up from. This heartless crime was so horrific that prosecuting attorney asked for the highest bond amount ever recorded in the county's history. Welcome to another episode of Jazzy Times Crime. This is the case of Chad Dorman. On Laura Lindell Road lived 32-year-old Chad and his 34-year-old wife and their three boys and one girl, seven-year-old Clayton, four-year-old Hunter, three-year-old Chase, and a teenage daughter who was Chad's stepdaughter. The boys were energetic and full of life like most children. They love dogs and sports, their favorite being baseball. So fast forward to June 15, 2023. Late afternoon, the teenage stepdaughter can be seen running in the middle of the street, frantically screaming that her dad is killing everyone in her house. Defense. So the nature of the crime. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, there's a girl uh, running down the street, like her stepfather is killing everyone in her family. Um, it's on the corner of Lake Street and Wilson. There's a body shop in the fire department. Do you know what road this is? Into the fire department. What's your name? My, do you know what road this is? Laura Lindell Road. What? It's Laura Lindell Road. Okay, and what did the female say to you? She said that her stepfather is killing everybody in her house. I did. I'm call. I'm on the phone with them right now. Did you say how or what was? I asked. I asked her to get in the car with me, and she said she couldn't leave her family. But she, I think she ran to the fire department. So she went to the fire station? What did she look like? She's a, a she, she's probably a young teenager, probably like 50, uh, 16 maybe, with long blonde hair. Um, and she, she has a black baby? dog. Did she say anything about a baby? I, I don't know about no baby. She said she just couldn't leave her family. But I see a car running around. I'm sorry? Do you see anything from the house? Well, so I drove down the road a little bit, so I was afraid that I was going to get shot myself since I interacted with her face-to-face. So I'm just about, like, uh, maybe three houses down. Um, But she's, like, waiting at the corner. I don't know what she's doing, but I kind of still see her in the corner. Her goal was to get the fire department. So once the police deputies were dispatched, unfortunately, it was too late. The three innocent boys were lifeless. You show me your hands now! Stand up and walk towards us! Stand up now! Walk towards us! Stand up with your hands up! I know, but we can't take it. We gotta find cover first. We ain't no good if we ain't safe or so. Hey, hey, no. We need to come from this side where we can see them. Come take cover behind them. We see him. We're going to approach from this side. We got cover. Right here. Big cover. 29 and 63 attack on. Show us your Show fucking me. hands now. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up now! Stand up! 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 Stand up
63, we're 21. Not Have EMS on. respond over here. You're clear they're being advised. Robert, 34, just start a mass cast. inside the house? What? You're the only one else inside yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah. Sit down uh, right here. My, my daughter, she ran over to the fire department. Sit down. Uh, it's my stepdaughter. Put him in the cage. This is real. This is real. This is real. In the heart-wrenching crime scene, you can see the baby's body scattered on the ground, which is the black boxes you see in the body cam. This is very hard to listen to. The boy's mother, who is also Chad's wife, was shot in the hand trying to protect her babies, and you can hear her gut-wrenching screams as she's trying to figure out why her husband would do this. So they immediately transported her to a nearby hospital to take care of her hand. Chad Dorman's first victim was the four-year-old. He shot him twice inside of their home. And then seven-year-old tried to flee the scene and ran outside, but Chad chased him and carried him back to the house and shot him in front of the mother. And then three-year-old Chase was the last victim after being ripped out of his mother's arms. And Chad confessed to all of this. He confessed to killing his children. He was very calm and cooperative. So on Friday, June 16th at 10 a.m., Chad Dorman appeared for his arrangement at Claremont County Municipal Court, where he cried as the prosecutor told the judge what happened. And we also learned that he had been planning this months ago. On June 26th at 1 p.m. was the preliminary hearing and the judge granted the, the prosecutor request of a $20 million bond. We were here on behalf of Mr. Dorman, Mr. DeCalvey, Mr. Gett, case judge the case is still new uh, 
uh, there's no discovery facts. Just incomprehensible cruelty. The father to stand before you lined up his three young boys and he executed them in his own home with a rifle. They were ages three, four, and seven, Judge. In an act of desperation, the sailor children, the mother, at some point, grabbed the gun, the father was always was able to flee and the field in the home. And again, we know from his admission, the father hunted that boy down, drug him back to the property, and executed him in front of witnesses. The mother was shot through the hand in her attempt to protect her children. To just begin to imagine their fear. This was the man that every day they woke up looking to for protection, love, guidance in all things. The man they trust more than any other person on earth. The person they rely upon to keep them safe from harm. He was their world, he was their guardian. And he executed them in full blood. We know that from his admission. <clears throat> One of the most monstrous, craven, cowardly acts that will ever be our misfortune to see. To make things even more disturbing, Judge, this was no haphazard act. Again, by his own admission, he planned the happen on a whim. He's confessed to what I believe is the worst crime, which at least I hope, that I'll see in my lifetime. I hope it's the worst fact pattern that ever comes before this court. Judge, it's important for the court to know and Monroe Township Fire and EMS and other first responders bravely respond to the scene where they don't know what's going on. They did not know what they're facing and they come into a, a scene that no one can ever be prepared for. No law enforcement training, no training of any kind prepares you for this. It's easy to forget that these are men and women with families, children, feelings, emotions. They're not some automaton performing a delegated function or people. But they're all children. They held these boys in their arms, knowing, knowing there was nothing they could do to save them. How long do those scars last? Did he wake up from that and did he have access to a weapon? Yes, obviously he did. The weight of the evidence against the defendant at this point, Judge, we stand here with a full admission of the defendant. That also goes to the confirmation of the defendant's identity and witnesses on the scene did see at least part of what happened. Next, the court is to consider the likelihood this person would return to court if a bond were issued. Again, this is the most heinous crime with the most severe penalty under the law that we presented to the grand jury. That alone would be a, a major factor in discouraging a person from availing themselves to this court or any other. And the thought to flee and the likelihood of flight is great in the state's opinion. The danger he poses to the community is a factor that this court can consider. And I think with the facts in front of you, Judge, we can't name a person that poses a greater threat to the community. As his prior record goes, Judge, it is fairly minimal. He was charged with domestic violence in 2010. <clears throat> he is not, to my knowledge, on probation community control. Judge, the facts of this case are hopefully like no other we will ever see. When this case gets indicted in the Court of Common Pleas, I am certain that a no bond hearing will be held, and I would hope that would be granted. But at this point, at this juncture, we're going to ask this court to issue a bond we've never asked for before. I'm going to ask for a bond of $20 million. I hope I never need to request such a bond again. Thank you. Uh, date for preliminary hearing? The date for the preliminary hearing, Judge, is 6-26.
The preliminary hearing will be set for June 26th at 1 p.m. At this point in time, bond's going to be set the amount of 20 million cash or surety. Anything else at this time, Mr. Gast? No, Judge. Mr. Gast. Mr. Calm, anything further? Nothing at this time. Right. Thank you. At the end, Chad had the audacity to blurt out a request for a CCO2 and got ignored. A CCO2 is like protection in jail. But the judge looked at him like the audacity, yeah, but no. So one week later, jury added more charges and a 21 count indictment against Chad, including nine counts of aggravated murder, eight counts of kidnapping, and four counts of felonious assault. July 5th, 2023 was the pretrial hearing and the judge denied his attorney's request for a full gag order because his attorney mentioned that it has been played too many times online, but a gag order is a uh, like a, a order restricting information from the public or like third parties or anybody connected to the case. They are not allowed to talk to the press or post about it online. And prosecutors also have the ability to seek the death penalty since it is a capital crime. So everyone wants to know why, and we still have no motive and probably won't get one since Chad's lawyer is asking for a gag order. But Chad's father said he just snapped. He probably hid something from me, but something had to have happened. Maybe he couldn't handle life anymore. Now, y'all know a parent's love is real for him to have his son's back like this because when Chad was 18 years old, he was facing second degree dis misdemeanor of criminal damage and in 2010, domestic violence for choking his father. But the charges got dismissed when his father decided not to show up to court. So that right there already tells us a lot. However, since 2020, Police has been dispatched to the Doerman's residence two times before the killing, but there is no details about those specific events at the time of this recording. But one of Chad's friends described him as short temper and always yelling. And their neighbors said it was an everyday routine of Chad screaming at his wife and kids. And oddly enough, a few days before the shooting, he changed his profile picture on Facebook to his son's. I feel like he had a motive to kill them with the intent to hurt his wife and make her suffer for the rest of her life because after he chased down the little boy, Clayton, instead of just killing him outside in the woods, he took him back inside to kill him in front of his mom, which is a story I got. Now, some articles are saying he shot him outside in the woods, but the point that I'm making is taking his wife's life wouldn't be enough pain. Like, you can hear her screaming, saying, you took my life from me. And in that moment, he felt like he had won. Because look at how calm. He was so calm and cooperating with the police. He even tried to calm his dogs down so that they wouldn't try to attack the police. So I wholeheartedly believe Chad wanted his wife to die on the inside versus the outside. So he took away what she loved the most. But that's only my opinion. He has not said his motive at the time of this recording. His trial has been set to begin July 8th of 2024 and is expected to last four weeks. So look out for more information. But if you would like to see more Family Feud cases, then click right here. If you would like to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another video, then click right here. I love you and we shall talk again in the next episode of Jazzy Science Crimes.